In this video, we discuss how pressure affects the stability of phases in pure substances. Okay, so here's the question that we're trying to understand. Uh, suppose that you have a pure substance like water or ethanol or silicon. Uh, there are various phases that can take place. You can have solid, liquid, or gas, and sometimes various solids for solid forms. So the question that we're asking is, why uh, sometimes you have that under ambient conditions of temperature and pressure the solid is the stable phase like in silicon but why for some other substances uh, the liquid phase is a stable one such as water for example or ambient conditions all right so it turns out that the stability of the phase is determined uh, by thermodynamics and the variable that allows you to predict that is the molar gibbs energy in the last video, we actually have derived exactly how this worked, and I'm going to take just the first few seconds of this video to remind you of the main take-home message from that last video. Okay, so again, suppose you have a phase transition of alpha to beta, where alpha can be either solid, liquid, or gas, and beta can be uh, either one of the other two that you have. Okay, so maybe solid to liquid. Uh, what we can do then is predict whether this process, this phase transition, will be spontaneous by simply calculating the change in molar Gibbs energy, actually the, the change in total uh, Gibbs energy for this process of going from alpha to beta. And we uh, came up with an uh, uh, equation where you have that this is just the amount that is turning from alpha to beta, so that is differential of n, the number of moles, and this is simply going to be the molar Gibbs energy of the final phase, beta, minus the molar Gibbs energy of the initial phase, alpha. Okay, so here's the key, because we're working at constant temperature and pressure, and all phase transitions are isothermal and isobaric, then we can use uh, the change in Gibbs energy as a criterion for a spontaneity, right? So if the sign of this change in Gibbs energy is negative at constant pressure and temperature, then we will know that the phase transition is spontaneous. And what that means is that the stable phase is beta, not alpha, because the transformation of alpha into beta is spontaneous. Right, so the, the way that this works is that, notice that in order for this to be negative, the differential of n can never be negative. So uh, in order, the, the parenthesis has to be negative, right? So what that means is that the more it gives energy of the phase that you're starting from has to be larger than the molar Gibbs energy of the phase that you're turning into. Or in other words, the stable phase, beta, if this transformation is spontaneous, is the phase of lowest molar Gibbs energy. All right, so that is the understanding. In silicon, which is solid at ambient conditions, the solid has the lowest molar Gibbs energy of all the phases that you have, right? So it will have a lower molar Gibbs energy than the liquid phase, a lower molar Gibbs energy than the gas phase. For water, though, under ambient conditions, it turns out that the liquid phase is the one of lowest molar Gibbs energy, and that controls stability. All right, so that's kind of the summary of the last video. Now what we're going to try to do is see how that stability changes when you change the conditions, right? So we know that water is liquid at ambient conditions, but if you were to cool down below zero Celsius at one bar of pressure, then the solid phase is a stable one. Right, so that means that there's some point there in which the molar Gibbs energy of the solid becomes lower than the molar Gibbs energy of the liquid. Right, so that means that temperature uh, affects the stability of the phase. Now it turns out that pressure also affects the stability of the phase, and, and that's what we're going to be covering in this video. Okay, so let's see if we can get started with uh, that thing. Right, so the idea is that we're trying to see how the molar Gibbs energy, which is what controls phase stability, is affected by the conditions. And we know that the fundamental equation for the Gibbs energy, which we have derived before, is this. Uh, the variation with respect to pressure is through the molar volume, and the variation with respect to temperature is with the molar entropy. Right? And we can write that in terms of partial derivatives, which give you that dependence in a little bit more explicit way. Okay, so isothermally, uh, the change in molar Gibbs energy with uh, pressure is equal to the molar volume, and if you change the molar Gibbs energy with the temperature at constant pressure, 
then there is the minus molar entropy. Okay, so we actually, uh, uh, a few videos back, we saw how uh, the Gibbs energy changed depending on those variables, and we actually drew some graphs to uh, exemplify this behavior. Right, so we're going to recover that, but now from the standpoint of phase stability, which will be very illuminating, hopefully. Right, so here we go. You have here a graph in which we're going to plot the molar Gibbs energy as a function of pressure for three phases of a pure substance, the solid, the liquid, and the gas. And again, we've already talked about this in earlier videos, so I'm going to go a little fast through this. Right, so we said that again, uh, what you have here is lines that are going to be different for each phase because each phase has a different molar volume. Right? The molar volume of a gas is much larger than that of a liquid and a solid. Uh, for example, for water at ambient conditions, you have that the molar volume of the gas phase is about a thousand times greater than that of the liquid uh, or the solid. So what you see, what you will see here for the gas is a line with a really large slope compared to the lines of the liquid and the solid. At the same time, we actually know that the molar volume of a gas depends uh, uh, also on pressure. Right, so uh, we saw that there's a logarithmic dependence, uh, and, and again, that's in uh, covered in prior videos. But in essence, we actually came up with a, a line that looked like this. It's not straight, right? It's curved and it's logarithmic, and that is the line of the gas in which the slope, at any point, is just the molar volume of the gas. Okay, well, great. Uh, now let's try to plot here the lines for the liquid and the solid. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is draw uh, now the liquid line, which is going to be uh, this one. Let's see, that one will be the liquid. And then we're going to draw the solid line uh, here as well. But we're going to do it in black trace. Okay, so for the solid, I'm going to be drawing uh, another line which looks like this. It also needs to have positive slope, but the slope generally is going to be smaller than that of the liquid. Okay, so again, through lines of positive slope, the slopes at each point are the molar volumes, and um, uh, the gas is actually much, much greater than that of the liquid and the solid. All right, so what is it that, do we, that we learn that is near? Okay, so here's a, what we can uh, add on to this graph that we had already drawn. The idea then is that the phase of lowest molar Gibbs energy of the three will be the stable phase at some conditions. Okay, so when we look at this, uh, at this graph, we can predict what the stable phase will be at any pressure, okay, if uh, we simply look at what is the uh, um, phase of lowest moral Gibbs energy. Okay, so if you go to really high pressures, right, so you have a sample and you apply a lot of pressure to it, what we see is that the solid is the line of lowest moral Gibbs energy, right, this line is below the liquid and that of the gas. Right, so that means that at all these range of pressure, it will be the solid that is the stable phase. Right? Uh, and that is going to happen until you hit that crossing. Okay, so that crossing is very relevant. At that point, what you have is that the molar Gibbs energy of the liquid is identical to the molar Gibbs energy of the solid. And then if you calculate the changing Gibbs energy from the liquid to the solid, what you see is that that is zero. And that means that you have an equilibrium phase transition. Okay, so that's what we're going to see here. I am going to label this uh, right here. That will be the solid to liquid equilibrium phase transition. And then if you continue to uh, lower the pressure, so you draw, draw out the pressure that you have on the system, what happens is that the liquid will be the stable phase uh, in this range of pressure. But if you continue to do that, you, got, you get to a different point here where the molar Gibbs energy of the liquid is identical to the molar Gibbs energy of the gas. And that means that both phases coexist. That is an equilibrium phase transition between the liquid and the gas, right? And that will happen at this particular pressure that you have right here. And if you continue to draw the pressure a little more, what happens is that it is the gas, the phase that is stable. Okay, so this is kind of a, a beautiful uh, uh, addition to a graph that we had drawn uh, about a week ago in which we saw how the Gibbs energy changes with, with the conditions. Here what we see is something that is not obviously apparent and that is that uh, generally when we want to make phase transitions 
we simply change the temperature, right? If you elevate the temperature a lot, then you will get a gas. If you cool down sufficiently, you will eventually get a solid, right? So that is easy to understand, and we all have experience with that. What this is showing is that you can do the same thing with pressure, right? If you uh, apply a lot of pressure to a substance, then uh, the solid will be the stable phase, and if you draw a lot of pressure, then it will be the gas uh, that is the stable phase. Okay, and all of this has to be at some temperature. Okay, so the details of this graph will change a little bit. The positions of the crossings of these lines will change a little bit according to the uh, temperature. Okay, so uh, let's make sure that we're right here. That all of this is at some temperature that uh, you have to define. Okay? Now, there's one final detail before we wrap up this video. And that is that uh, not all substances have this ordering of molar volumes. Here I run a case in which the molar volume of the solid is lower than that of the liquid, and of course the, uh, those are smaller than that of the gas. But there are some special substances, and water is the most notorious of them, in which these lines are reverse. Uh, the molar volume of liquid water is actually uh, a little lower than the molar volume of solid water. 10% lower and that's why ice floats uh, on water. So what that will mean is that for water and uh, some other substances like uh, germanium and, and uh, some other pure substances that are not very common, these lines will be swapped. Okay, the blue line that I have represented here for the liquid will be the solid line and um, the line that I've drawn here for the solid will be the liquid one. Okay, so what that means is that for water if you apply a lot of pressure you can actually turn the solid into the liquid. And that's something that we know is true, okay, under some conditions of temperature. Okay, but again, that is, that is a, a kind of an exception that I want, you, uh, I want you to be aware of. All right, so let me wrap up what we've done in this video. Uh, we, using the principles of thermodynamics, especially the analysis of how the Gibbs energy changes with temperature and pressure, we have been able to see that you can control what phase is stable in a particular pure substance by changing pressure. Okay. In the next video, we're going to see how that works when you change temperature. Okay. So how does temperature affect the stability of phases of pure substances?